end-fed wires can be noisy and cause interference. Beware. That at least is what the RSGB say in one of their guides to newcomers to ham radio. Well, maybe that is not quite right. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name's Peter Waters, my call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. And we're going to have a look at the end fed half wave. It's an antenna which I've covered in a number of videos, but I think it's time to actually look back on it now, summarise where we are, and also deal with some of the criticisms that perhaps have been rather unfairly levelled at it. I got an email from Michael. Hi Michael, and he said to me that he'd been licensed since 1972 and he, like a lot of others, doubted how well an end-fed wire would work because it had bad publicity and so forth. And he said he was very, very impressed indeed. He'd installed one, I think he followed my um, guidance and made a matching transformer. And he said that he was regularly working stations in New Zealand. Well, that it really was a jaw dropper for me and then I suddenly realised that Michael actually lives in Australia so <laughs> work in New Zealand on a regular basis um, at the moment uh, with conditions as they are would be quite an achievement but he's in Australia nevertheless it's uh, over 2,000 kilometres I believe but uh, it just underlines the fact that there is this well, dare I say, this, this ignorance about uh, end-fed wires. So let's, let's actually see if we can find out why this, is a ha this has happened. Why, for example, the RSGB are advising newcomers not to use an end-fed wire. I think it goes back to the, uh, I would say the early days, not the early days, but it goes back to the 1950s and 1960s when an end-fed wire was a very popular option and you used some sort of matching unit to match it and it did cause interference and there was noise well the first thing is that the interference was primarily caused to tvs which were operating on 45 megahertz and the uh, interference could also affect hi-fi systems which were valves with lots of leads and so forth and rather prone to rf pickup and the only reason that the end-fed wire was causing these problems was because it went straight into the operating shack, so it was very close to the house. So these items were prone to suffering from interference, were obviously affected because the RF was that much closer. And as for noise, well, I think the basic noise level now of today is such that it doesn't really matter whether you're using an end-fed wire or a dipole halfway down the garden. The noise level is very, very similar indeed. So it goes back to the point that because it used to be a problem, it must still be a problem. But of course, a lot of the problems were not so much the antenna as the equipment that was suffering from this interference was deficient or in the case of TV of course 45 mix is, uh, is is just outside the HF band and the problem is that this information is passed on so an amateur that was licensed in the 1960s and 70s will say oh the NFED wires causes this problem that problem and somebody either hears about it or reads about it and perpetuates the rumour well, in fact, it's not true, and I suspect this is what's happened with the RSGB uh, report. Somebody has been programmed to believe that an end-fed wire is a problem, perhaps without really trying it. I have to say that I've had a lot of emails from people that have been using end-fed half-waves, and uh, some in particular have doubted the uh, ability to uh, meet what's um, the promises are from uh, the, the, those that make NFED half waves or those like me that use NFED half waves. 
I had one customer that threatened me. He said that, uh, well, he sent me an email. He said to me, I'm going to buy this NFED half wave uh, on the basis of what you say and what you recommend. But rest assured, if it doesn't work, I'm going to send it straight back. I never heard another word from that gentleman, so I can only assume he was satisfied with it. So if you're new to uh, ham radio, or indeed you haven't tried an NFED half wave and you think it might solve some of your uh, problems for an antenna installation, then give it a try. So let's have a quick resume. An NFED half wave is what it says on the box. It's a half wavelength of wire which is fed at the end and it's fed via a matching box, a matching transformer. And because an NFED half wave also presents the same impedance when it's a multiple of half waves, it also works on harmonically related bands. So let's take, if you're lucky enough to have a garden that will fit um, 132 foot of wire in, sorry, uh, what is that, so 40 meters of wire? Yeah, if you've got a garden that you can fit 40 meters of wire into, that 80 meter antenna will also resonate on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, and it comes pretty close to working okay on the warp bands as well. Now, the NFED half wave is also fairly tolerant. You can bend it around the garden and it will still work. You may find the SWR, particularly on the uh, base band, on 80 meters in this case, the SWR may rise a bit, but your antenna tuner inside the radio, or inside your transceiver, will match it okay. And I've had many reports of customers that have managed to squeeze an 80 metre half wave into their garden by bending it around. If you can't fit that amount of wire in, but you can go the next band up to 40 metres where you need a 20 metre length of wire, and again you can bend it in the garden, that will give you 20, 15, 10, and um, sorry, 20, sorry, 40, 20, 15, and 10 but it won't give you the walk bands, but you will have a four band antenna that works just with a length of wire down the garden or bent around the garden. So that is the attraction of the end fed half wave. But the important thing I must stress is that it needs to be a half wave in order for it to work properly and certainly to work on the multiples. So make sure that the antenna is resonant on the baseband, i.e. 40 meters or 80 meters, and then it will work on the other bands. Now, in the case of, case of 80 meters, do remember that if you multiply up from 80 meters, say you're on 3.5 uh, megahertz, then you multiply up and it's fine. But if you resonate that antenna, the top end of 80 meters, the multiples are gonna to start to come outside the harmonic related band. So it's best really to resonate the antenna at the lower part of 80 meters, tolerate a bit of the SWR and take up the slack, tune it out with your internal ATU, which should match it quite happily. Counterpoises. Oh, how many times have I been asked about that? All I can tell you is that a counterpoise doesn't seem to have any obvious benefit. By all means, put a counterpoise in, and if you feel it, it makes a difference, fine. But generally speaking, the NFED half wave really doesn't need a counterpoise to make it work. There is some benefit, I guess, from the length of coax from the matching unit back to the transceiver, and it may only be about 10 or 15 feet or something like that. But I have never come across, in all the time I've been using NFED half waves, to find a problem there at all. The only thing I would suggest is that do put a line isolator between the end of the uh, antenna that is going to go into your transceiver and the transceiver. So a line isolator right at the shack end is really a good idea because it will make, make things much calmer. There's no risk of RF on the, on the chassis of the transceiver and it's, a, it's an easy way to get that antenna working without any problem. So do consider, or I would suggest mandatory, put in a line isolator at the point where the antenna goes into the transceiver. Or if you've got a VSWR meter, make sure the line isolator is on the antenna side of the SWR meter. And a line isolator, well, you can, it's quite easy to get yourself um, a couple of ferrite cores, wind some coax cable around it, 
or even wind the coax cable up in a coil but it's best to use some sort of ferrite material there's lots of suggestions on the uh, internet about that and it is not a critical item um, it, uh, uh, a number of turns around a, a ferrite material seems to do the job but do do um, do make sure that you have a line isolator of some sort but as I say go on the internet there's plenty of articles and recommendations about line isolators and it does calm the whole antenna down and, and it also makes the VSW meter you know, read correctly and probably gives the internal ATU of your transceiver an easier time so in summary, an NFED half-wave is a great antenna, it's a simple antenna, it's a multi-band antenna and it doesn't mind being bent around the garden. If somebody tells you that NFED wires don't work and they're noisy and they cause interference, don't believe them because they are probably telling you what they've been told. It's been passed down the line. Generally speaking, anybody that says that probably has never tried one. It's not an expensive option anyway, particularly if you make it yourself. And all I can say is I've been using one now for about two or three years and I've tr tried all sorts of different combinations. I used it at portable as well as fixed station. Very happy with it. Just before we sign off, I've been asked to mention the Serio 4 meter 3 quarter wave vertical that we've got back in stock now. This is a very interesting antenna because it's got a significantly high angle radiation which makes it very good for sporadic E and yet it will still provide local contacts. A bit of gain and because it's vertical it's omnidirectional so you haven't got to worry about a rotator. If you own either an ICOM IC7300 or the FTDX10 or 101 and got 70 megs uh, on board then it makes an attractive proposition. Bear in mind that we are now starting to approach the sporadic E season. I'm recording this uh, at the end of March, right at the end of March, when we've got 23 degrees outside. It won't last, but it is a reminder that spring's on the way and sporadic E season is also on the way. So have a look at that. I've put details up on the screen here of the product. It's not overly expensive, and if you've got four meters on your rig, it's a shame not to use it, particularly in the next three months when uh, there's a lot of DX to be had through the sporadic e propagation there we are so that's the end of the little uh, commercial it's also the end of the video appreciate you watching this video don't forget to press subscribe and more to come in the meantime take care